Yes, we are back with another episode of Season 2, Profit or Loss. I actually have no updates for the spreadsheet from episode number 51 where we fixed the OLED because it hasn't sold just yet. But what I will say is that we're looking very, very good. Over the last seven episodes, we have profited £276. If I remove the cost for the OLED, we have profited so far 347 Scores on the doors, we're still around about £150 away so far. But maybe we can get that profit in today's episode. And if we do, I'm not going to be able to confirm the win for the series until I actually get this item sold. And let me be 100% truthful with you as always. I am recording this intro after the video, this one you're gonna watch, of an attempt to repair has already been recorded. So I know the outcome. So sit back, relax, grab your cup of tea, whatever it is, personally, maybe like a chocolate digestive, they're my favorite, and enjoy this episode. And I guess I'll speak to you at the end. So usually I tell you, you know, let's talk about what the fault is with this one, but. The seller on eBay has very kindly stated that it's no power and it's a beat blue light. I bought this PS5 on eBay for a total of £144.29. pence. Quickly remove this from... Uh, that's going to probably mark the chassis. This is, in fact, a digital edition PlayStation 5. So I think the amount that I pay for it isn't too bad. Okay. It's extremely dusty, so I might need to get the old Hooverino out here. But for the time being, let me just continue disassembling. It does, in fact, look like it's been uh, opened before, unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm just going to test it first. So I'm just going to push the power button, see what happens. So we get a beep, we get a fan spin, straight off. Let's try again. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to take a wild guess, and I'm going to say, but only because I've not had one for such a long time, I'm going to say short on the back of the Wi-Fi I see on one of the caps. If that's right, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be angry at me, because they're going to be like, you've opened this, Joe, and you've looked at it before. I promise you I haven't, but I, I, I've just got a feeling. Or it's going to be the cable for the LED lights. I mean, my first looks on this is it actually looks pretty clean, even like the grill which is weird i mean there's a there there is a big dust bunny down there but the grill itself looks relatively clean so i don't know how to kind of feel about this at the moment we are we should be able to uart this if i can't find the fault i'm going to be a little bit of a moron and not look at uart because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more of a challenge i mean this the simple the, the simple thing here would just be to plug it in and use uart but sometimes i like to give the old brain a test and um just see if i can work it out without it i don't know if it has been uarted i'm not too sure i can't really tell uh and also I mean, just because it hasn't been uarted doesn't mean that it's not fixable, in my opinion. Just makes it harder. Um, how do we look? Do you know what? We look all right. I'm going to go ahead and say I don't even know if this has been opened because the Phillips head screws that are here look really, really good. Like, almost untouched. So I'm going to turn my multimeter on right now. Yeah, it does look quite dark, doesn't it, around here? How is the cable? I mean, cable looks absolutely fine from what I can tell. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Let's uh, let's do some voltages quickly. Just see if I get a short anywhere. Right, we're in DC voltage. Let me set the speed to high. You guys can see the multimeter on your screen right now. Okay, let's ground this lead and I'm just going to prod around. Oh, what's that? I see some like sticky stuff here. Oh no, that's not good. Let's check the uh let's check the 5. Oh, we do have 5. Okay. 5, 3.3. Yeah, 12. Obviously, because we get our other voltages. I get the 2 as well. Interesting. Okay. So it looks like we have all of our voltages supposedly. Could be something whereby a fuse is gone and whatever current comes after that is gone. Whatever voltage is after that fuse is what's been damaged. So it still could be a three or a five or something on that rail. It's just that a fuse might have popped. I think most of the fuses on here though are for the five. Can I see my first things first? Any signs of flux residue or things that have been changed? It doesn't look like it. SSD controller does have a little bit of um, discoloration. Can you guys see that where it's like sweating in the middle? So the outside is like a lighter color than what the center is. Or is any, I, actually, let me take that back. There's only probably like one bit on here. That's interesting. Let's move the chassis out of the way and just zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to do some probing right now. Because I have my suspicions about the SSD controller, I wonder if around one of the uh, voltage chips if we're going to get anything. So I'm in continuity mode right now. Let me turn it around and measure on this one here. R RT, uh, RT, RTC chip. So what do we get here? We're meant to get around about 50, 60. Yeah, we get 66. Do I get a beep anywhere? No, all kind of... So far, so good anyway. I see 461 there. I see my 66 there. Okay, let's check the back of the south bridge as well, which is just up here. I'm just going to check the back. So I should get around about 700 ohms. Yeah, we get 870. That's within scope. Any shorts? Doesn't seem like it. I'm going to check my favorite area, which is here. I've seen a bunch of shorts here recently. 
That seems to be measuring okay. That might be where the 2 volt is, actually. Let's check the HDMI chip, which is an option, by the way. So let's see. HDMI chip. Any shorts around here? On the back, anyway, first. Doesn't seem like it, so we can write that off. Let me just check on the other side whilst I'm here, just to rule that one off completely. HDMI IC. I'm just checking on some of the caps. We should read about 200 ohms or so. 400 ohms, sorry. 400. 400. 400. 400. Okay, I think that's all right. So we know that the HDMI chip is okay. We know that the SSD controller and the South Bridge are measuring okay on the back. That doesn't mean they're not faulty. The South Bridge and the SSD controller, which is these two chips, by the way. So here we have the South Bridge and here we have the SSD controller. They could, there could still be an issue there. I'm just checking elsewhere now on the board. I could check fuses, but I'm not going to. I'm just checking around another RTC chip for the South Bridge. Nothing there. This is an interesting one. Nothing's jumping out to me straight away. This is good. We like these ones. We like these ones. They can be annoying. But we like them. Now I'm just going to go fuses. Make sure we don't have anything blown. That one's good. F3501. That one's good. F7003. Good. I'm not going to check the disk drives ones. F7502. Good. This is going to be an interesting one. And I pretty much checked everyone on the back. F7002 on the back. Okie dokie. So nothing. Oh, do you know where I didn't check? The back of the... Uh, Wi-Fi IC, which is subsequently down here. Let's check the Wi-Fi IC. Because I called that as well. Imagine. No, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Back of the Wi-Fi IC is supposedly okay. So nothing's jumping out to us. So what I'm going to do now is inject voltage into the board to see if uh, to see if I get what's called a normal boot. Now, a normal boot would probably range from anywhere from 7 milliamps up to about 3, anywhere between 3 and 320, and then drop back down. But it will hang there for about a second or two. So let's see. I'll turn this bad boy on. There we go. 12 Vs. Right. So, three, two, uno. Ready? That's a normal boot. I think we're going to have to you up, unfortunately. I thought I was going to be smart <laughs> or try to be smart. I think, no, 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 because if it's a BIOS issue, it, it, um, it's, it's, it, it faults sooner than that. A BIOS issue is typically around about like the 7 milliamps. If you get, if you get nothing, or it's like 13 milliamps, something silly like that, I think it's going to be RAM. Potentially, yeah, it could be RAM. I mean, under the camera, it looks so bad. <laughs> under the camera, this area looks so bad, but in real life, it doesn't. It's really weird. I bet this is going to be like a, unable to find what the issue is. It's just a no power. I reckon that's what it might be. Oh, I think it is. I think it is the no, the generic no power. APU VRM two phases power rail. Sorry, power fail. Check Infineon chip, PWM controller. Check MOSFETs APU side for short. Caps usually short. Single beep, one second blue light. 8.6 milliamp draw power on. Now, I don't get an 8.6 milliamp draw power on. I get a power on. I get a full boot. I feel like it's, it's going to be something either APU related or one of the MOSFETs. Uh, or it could be the, the, I mean, the easiest thing for me to do here is change out that Infineon chip. I've had it work once. I've changed out the Infineon chip and it worked. That's only worked for me one time though. So I don't know if that's going to, am I going to get incredibly lucky and have it work again? I'm not too sure. I will check down here as well because there is some like quite dark discoloration if I show you just down here, which I think, I don't know if it's pointing to here or whether it's pointing to here. I think it's pointing to here. Anyway, regardless, uh, basically we have an issue that is quite difficult to try and resolve. So let's, let's try and resolve it, I guess. So this chip here, I have changed once before. And it's managed to get a PS5 working in Finion. But um, I couldn't see any shorts around it when I changed it. And it was a bit more of just like a Hail Mary sort of thing. If I go into continuity mode and measure on these caps, I don't think... I mean, none of them seem to be ground. There we go. 943. So I don't, again, necessarily think... Oh, wait, what's that? Now, I know this isn't much, right? I know this isn't much, but it's... Potentially something that shouldn't be there. Oh, what's that? I have to now work out that it just got interesting. I just have to, I now have to work out if that is sweat from heat or whether, is that a solder joint cracked there? Somebody has attempted to fix this. Is that a cracked solder joint? Because can you see, we do have some like uh, little sparkles, like little droplets of something. Can you see that? But it might be because the console's just got so hot and it's a factory flux. Yeah, look. 
Hmm. What's that? Is it sweat? It could be sweat, but I mean, that's a lot of sweat. Cause it's coming off very easy as well. I'm just taking a microfiber cloth here and just dabbing. Yeah, it might be factory flux where the balls got so hot. That could be, could be a thing. Is it a thing though is the question, you know? So it says about the two phase on the VRM. So I'm pretty sure that's here. So I'm just going to measure some of the caps around this area and rule that out quickly. So again, in continuity mode and just see if we've got any shorts. around these small caps. It would make my life 10 times easier, but seven ohms there. So yeah, I can't necessarily see anything here. 6.7 is fine, 6.7 is fine. Let me turn it over to the other side where we have that same rail, because we might have some stuff down here. Luckily, I think I can see the caps, but I'm still gonna have to try and, I hate this stuff so much with a passion. I'm sure that everyone else does as well. Yes, yeah, this stuff is thermal putty. So that's ground, right? Yep, that's ground. This is reading minus. Could be one of those. But also in the same sentence, you know, when I looked at the UART code, it says um, a 0.8 milliamp draw or whatever it was. So, you know, I am I am half tempted to just go ahead and change out the Infineon chip. It's worked before. Why wouldn't it work again? <laughs> Let's go with big tweezers for Fiddy. And we're going to go... 99% airflow to get this bad boy off. Where's me flux? Flux, where's me flux? No, this chip isn't paired to the board. I've, I've replaced one before and uh, I managed to get it working by replacing this chip. It's not the same as the T2 chip. There she goes. Let's take them off from a donor. Get back on the heat. Bit of flux. Don't think the chip's on correctly. That's, a, that's even a little bit too much, but it is what it is. And then we just reflow. Not changing the solder, nothing like that. Get my other tweezers and just give it a little bit of a nudge. See if I can get it in the right position. I think it's still a little bit skew with. There we go. Cool. We'll check if it's lined up in a second. How are we looking? Are we soldered? That's the main thing. Yep. If this does work, I'll be very surprised, by the way. I'll be extremely surprised if this does work because it's only worked for me once and I've done it a handful of times. I thought it was a myth. I didn't believe it. And then I literally had a board where I didn't know what else to do. So I thought, oh, I'll just change it because YOLO at this point. And uh, turns out it did in fact work. So let's see what happens now. And then if this doesn't work, we'll check the APU. Three, two, one. Oh, my where's my hdmi cable i've just had the three beeps i just had three beeps it's not in safe mode it's just booted it's just booted i don't believe it what i was so so certain it wasn't gonna work i was so certain it wasn't gonna work i'm gonna put this back together and see what the uh situation is all right here we go console back together power on imagine if it just turn off it still turns on awesome i think honestly i, I do believe this is fixed. There it is. Look, can you believe it? I can't believe this uh, This console's on because of the Infineon chip. Weirdly, it's vibrating when I uh, when I use the controller. But uh, you can see here, look, we're all good. So many times I've had that error code and I've tried changing out, you know, the chip or something else that's recommended and it's not worked. But twice now on uh, I've been I've been proven wrong. So again, a massive shout out to Phil Dakota for getting those codes and, and hosting them on, on a website, uartcodes.com. It massively helps me. Without it, there's there's no way, shape or form that I would have ever found that, ever. Because everything read okay around the IC as well. And I'm not just going to go around plucking every single IC off the board and replacing it. Because if I did that, I'd probably be here for at least 30 days. Now, I'm back and uh, I'm literally just going to finish up Sally to see what our estimated profit looks like from this episode. So it's episode number 52 and it's a... PS5 Digital. I paid $144.29 for this console. Nothing was used here for parts because the chip was taken from a donor. And I think I'm going to get, again, a nice round, I'll be honest, £200 for this PS5 Digital console, which, that's net profit, let me get the estimated profit, which would give us an estimated profit of roughly £37.71 after we take into consideration the eBay fees, etc. I still don't think that's going to be enough to hit our actual profit, but if I sell it for like 232 40 let me tell you, it's going to be very, very close. The next episode of Profit or Loss you might see might just be me updating the spreadsheet saying we did it. 
you know and this is episode number what number 52 so it could be episode number 53 54 who knows it all depends what does it depend on? i don't know what it depends on just you know if, if if they sell for what i said they do thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy hit the thumbs up button i appreciate you in your face and as always i shall see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>